So welcome back to the lesson or the part we are discussing about epigenetics mostly. And we are talking about, we discussed about imprints and we were discussing somewhere here, methylation status during and after fertilization. Maybe we'll also, uh, we will take about, talk about X chromosome inactivation in the next class. Maybe I'll try to review what we have done. I just gave you an introduction in the last class. So let's see if we can get it through. So we discussed first about animal cloning and why we are discussing all this is we are many a times when we do animal cloning, sometimes they die out. Sometimes there is abnormal growth. Occasionally they might give rise to uh, living, or, living organisms, but they have some problems. Majority of the problems are because of epigenetic uh, issues. Therefore, what happens during the early development growth and how epigenetics is playing a role is what we should understand. What happens to the genome, right, during the, in, especially in the case of germplasm? If you look at it uh, carefully, you will notice that. The germplasm, okay, it's continuous. The germplasm and somatoplasm have some differences. The way the genome is treated in the germplasm and in the somatoplasm. So if you look at the imprints, the imprints of the germ somatoplasm will remain like that for the continuous, for the entire duration of the life. Or there is no rewriting of the imprints. Whereas in germplasm, there are changes. That is what we are actually discussing and trying to understand how the genome is affected epigenetically during the process of early development and in the germplasm. So as we discussed earlier, the germplasm, the precursors of all germplasm is primordial germ cells which of course have come from zygote. Everything, primordial germ cells, primordial germ layers, everything comes from the zygote eventually. These will, these primordial germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, will form the somatoplasm, the physical body of us. And the primordial germ cells will give rise to the gametes, either oocyte or sperm. So during this process, the primordial germ cells, well, the zygote is coming with imprints, right? Zygote is forming from a sperm and an ovum. They have imprints and zygote is forming those imprints. The same imprints are carried on along the somatoplasm and the complete body, physical body. Somatic part or vegetative part, you can say. Whereas in the germplasm or the cells, primordial germ cells that will eventually give rise to the germplasm, what happens is the erasure happens. All the imprints are erased, erased. The demethylation of the DNA occurs. And during the formation of the gametogenesis, there is a new imprint made. And also what is happening with the, during the gametogenesis say here there is erasure and then eventually we are having we're having more things happen within the sperm or oocyte there are differences in the way the things happen in duration and also the changes in in the dna of that is going to be a prospective it is uh, sperm all the dna is methylated histone uh, methylation occurs, deacetylation occurs, and all these histones would have been replaced eventually by protomines. So the methylated DNA is bound around protomines in a sperm head, right? That should be carried. Whereas in oocyte, you, there is a delay, and of course, uh, their methylation imprints will occur, but it mature oocyte and the completion of meiosis will only be after fertilization occurs. So those are some of the differences. And as we already discussed, uh, HPF is uh, ours post-fertilization. 
there are um, this is the male pronucleus that has come from the sperm and female pronucleus is in still deployed or it's undergoing meiosis and one of it will get uh, hypermethylated in a way and uh, be extruded out as polar body the other one will form the female pronucleus and the blue one here is the male pronucleus and then eventually these two pronuclei will fuse and form an, an a nucleus and then on divisions and so on will happen so this is what we were discussing yesterday i hope uh, yeah let me put everything up so i hope i'm re repeating and uh, if you have any questions please do ask so that i might probably have a chance to discuss or explain it differently there are global methylation events methylation demethylation events to the whole genome okay during the early stages of growth during early from you can take it uh, from the time a primordial germ cell formed here we have the mature uh, gametes here in this phase fertilization is occurring and from here on it is growing into an individual right the embryo stages so the primordial germ cells may have different ways of methylation. And before going ahead, I would also want to explain uh, the things like what we have discussed already. This is the degree of methylation. This is the progression or in the stages of development into a complete organism. We are starting with uh, the formation of gametes, for, uh, the precursors of gametes, formation of gametes, fertilization, and then we are going into stages of embryo. So primordial germ cells, when they are here, they name it be, there are four lines. Yes, that is another thing. We have black and yeah, the genes can be separated into two categories, imprinted and non-imprinted. Say for example, IGF2, IGF2R, those are some of the H19, those are some of the genes that are imprinted. They may be expressed from maternal genes or paternal genes. We are not concerned about it right now. All we know, we include all those genes that come under uh, imprinting, gene regulation by imprinting, we put them in this category. All the other genes, we put them as non-imprinted uh, genes or sequences. So imprinted ones, we give it as black, and gray say for example if it is um, igf2 igf2 is expressed from the paternal allele right and that means the maternal one would have been methylated so it would have represented the um, the maternal igf2 would have been represented by the black line here whereas uh, the non-methylated one, say, I, same IGF2, if it were in a male, it would have been non-methylated. Then it would have been represented uh, by gray. So there are, here we are talking about either uh, one of the, the, the germ cells. When we discuss about this, you have to, we have to discuss about formation of egg and the formation of sperm separately, right? But this one is giving a complete close-up picture uh, together. And these two will fertilize and form one individual, right? So all I want you to remember is during imprinting, in imprinted genes, some genes are methylated, some genes are unmethylated. So the methylated ones are represented by the black line and gray line represents the non-methylated imprinted genes. And the next, the other category is um, non-imprinted sequences. We have, we have acquired, we are biparental here. The embryo is biparental, so it must have acqu acquired the DNA from a mother and father. And they are represented by the red is maternal and blue is paternal one. Okay, now we are looking at what happens to the whole genome in general. So during the formation from primordial germs to uh, somewhere around that time, 
there is complete global demethylation. That means all the DNA that is present here would get demethylated. Then upon uh, about the time that is the cell, the gametes are maturing or completely differentiating, there will be uh, global methylation. Except there is one difference you have to see is the gray line. Though that gray line will remain unmethylated, which means they are the non-methylated. Say, for example, you can think of it as IGF-2 from the paternal, paternal IGF-2 would come in this category. Okay? If it were a sperm that is forming. So some genes will be left unmethylated and the rest of the genome, including imprinted, non-imprinted, everything else gets imprinted, uh, methylated. Right? So that is this stage. And then fertilization would occur. Fertilization through as a means by cortical reaction. There are several things that happen in which the paternal genome gets rapidly demethylated. All the methylation that has been done until here would get rapidly demethylated. And the female, the maternal genome set will get demethylated much more gradually compared to this one. Probably this is because the male pronucleus, the DNA is wound around protomines and the protomines should be replaced with, uh, with histones. And probably during that process, the DNA is much more accessible and therefore DNA methylases can act upon the male pronucleus and demethylate it. If you re recollect, the female uh, genome is still undergoing meiosis. There is still there should be an extrusion of the polar body as well. So probably the DNA here is not as accessible because it's much more compressed because it's undergoing still undergoing cell division. So as it finishes, probably then it is much more accessible and then demethylation may be happening to the rest. So while demethylation is happening, there are some genes that will remain unmethylated un, uh, or remain methylated. And those are the black ones they, that is representing these genes, right? That is something like, for example, um, the one H19 of paternal genome is methylated, isn't it? So paternal H19 would have been methylated and that that gene would be constantly, uh, would remain methylated. Paternal IGF-2, for example, will remain methylated, and that will come in the category of this black line here. Okay? So here you can also have maternal H19 that could come in, or representing the gray line. And then in the somatoplasm, these two are we are discussing about the somatoplasm. Uh, majority of them will, I mean, these are the genes that are important for tissue specific genes and so on, or housekeeping genes and everything else. So they may increase in the methylation based on differentiation lineage. Right? It will form a blastocyst, ICM, and ICM will form primordial germ layers and so many things happen. So what is important at this stage? I hope you understood the most important things. Say, once again. So I hope uh, I will try to get rid of this and try to discuss the most important review once, and then we will move ahead. OK? So what I want you to remember, because in the next uh, slide, I have a few questions, I think, and I would like you to answer them. So there are, there are uh, imprinted genes, non-imprinted genes. Imprinted could be either methylated or non-methylated or unmethylated. So they are represented by black and gray. And then there are non-imprinted genes, which could, which are maternal and paternal. This we are talking in terms of male pronucleus or female pronucleus and the events of methylation during the early, from the time of 
primordial germ cells to the formation of an embryo. So there is global demethylation. This is the point at which most of the DNA, almost all the DNA of the genome is, is unmethylated. And this is at this stage when, when the um, gametogenesis is complete, most of the DNA is methylated, except for the genes, imprinted genes, non-methylated imprinted genes. And then there is global demethylation upon fertilization. The, the male pronucleus, the DNA will get rapidly demethylated, whereas female one goes a little slow or gradual. And then methylation patterns occur based on gene expression uh, or differentiation patterns, lineages, and so on. And at, say, for example, if we there is a protein called, this is old information, but it could still be relevant. If there is a protein, if we, there is a protein called a Stella. If we remove the, uh, this protein, if we delete this protein or gene from a cell, then here we are having gradual rapid demethylation, right? The whole genome, majority of the genome is getting demethylated except these imprinted methylated genes. If we delete Stella, even those genes also get demethylated and the methylation pattern would have fallen. And then the cells usually die or the embryos usually die. So when whole, all of the genome is getting demethylated, this is all, the gray line is already demethylated, no worries. The maternal, sorry, paternal one is getting rapidly demethylated, good. Female, uh, the maternal one is also getting demethylated, fine. And when all the genome is getting demethylated, why is this not getting demethylated? Why are the imprinted genes not demethylated? That is probably, or uh, it is actually a complex step, but at least one observation was that Stella, if we remove this Stella, this, these genes are also getting demethylated. And that is resulting in loss of imprinting. And usually the cells die or the embryos die. Okay. So let's see if we can answer a few questions here. And I would like you to address it uh, so that I'll be able to uh, write what you mean. Which genes remain methylated during development of embryo? That means remain methylated all through the, I mean, during the development of embryo. Anybody? You can, they, uh, this is already here, right? You can just pick one answer and say. Which color line? You can say the color. Black. Yes. Uh, can you, black is correct. Which genes can you? Um, Sir, that are imprinted uh, methylated. Yes, yes, imprinted methylated, right? That is right. Can you give one example if you can? If you cannot, it's all right too. IGF2. Yes, IGF2 of what? Maternal, paternal, because two are there, right? In one case, it is imprinted. Paternal. Paternal IGF2 is expressed or repressed. So, maternal IGF2 would have been methylated, right? Because IGF2 is expressed on the paternal allele. Okay, so if I said it differently in the previous slide, I will correct it. But maternal IGF2 would have been here. It would have been imprinted. There are two IGF2s, right? One is from maternal and one is from the paternal IGF2. IGF2 from the paternal is not methylated or it is expressed, whereas it is repressed in IGF2 from the maternal one. That's all right. Genes that remain unaltered all along in terms of DNA methylation, okay? Yes. Which genes are that are remain unaltered all along? Anybody?
non methylated imprinted genes yes grape is representing the grape that's right they are unmethylated here they are unmethylated here unmethylated all through right they are gray they are imprinted genes but they are non methylated imprinted genes any examples you should say in paternal and maternal h19 is expressed from which allele maternal or paternal okay h19 is expressed from the maternal allele so the paternal h19 would have sorry the the maternal h19 would have been unmethylated okay and the maternal igf2r receptor for igf2 would have been unmethylated the paternal um igf2 would have remained unmethylated or expressed you can say it that way of course the organization many things are there right the organization the types of se regulatory sequence and what type of protein binds it is complex but i hope you get the point there genes that undergo rapid demethylation uh, during primordial germ cell stage anybody around this stage what you're seeing is all the black ones that were having methylation the blue the red which are representing all the genes gray is already methylated the unmethylated demethylated so we don't have any problems there right everything is getting demethylated around this stage difference between maternal and paternal genomes right after fertilization what are the differences one is going rapid demethylation whereas the other one is going other one is getting demethylated much more gradually that is because of probably because of we, we, we there is there are still many things we don't know people are striving to find the answers for these and one of the reasons is probably that because the male pronucleus is much more accessible the dna is much more accessible to demethylases and because they are being the proteins around which the male pronucleus dna is bound around is replaced with are replaced with histones so during that time probably there is much more accessibility whereas the female pronucleus or the maternal genomes are still undergoing cell division uh, so or meiosis because of which they could be much more compact and packed so maybe they are not that accessible to demethylases which line would be affected say if uh, if the protein or a gene for stella is deleted what would have happened which line would have been affected anybody s yes, please what is the function of stella stella prevents the erasure of imprints during demethylation demethylation after fertilization okay around this stage it, it during this stage demethylation is happening stella protects the law erasure of imprints or demethylation of the imprints 
So by that, which line that is shown here is going to get, if Stella was removed or deleted in that particular cell line or organism, the black line would have also gotten demethylated. I mean, it would have gone this way. But because of Stella, Stella protects the imprints from a demethylation. Do you have any questions on this at this stage? Are you people there? Yes, I will. So this is the last slide, and then I will stop and probably have a small discussion on the CAA. OK, that might be useful to others as well. So what we discussed previously is for natural normal one, right? That is normal embryos, especially if you are doing normal in vitro fertilization, if you are doing, then this is very much fine. What if we have done for SCNT? SCNT is somatic cell nuclear transfer. That means we are putting, taking a nucleus from a somatic cell and putting it into an enucleated egg and hoping it will divide and produce a clone. So during that time, what would happen? The green line here is what is imprint, uh, what is representing the nuclear transfer uh, genes. So the male and female, when we have it in normal one, okay, normal, um, that is IVF, assume that red and blue are indicating um, IVF, where this is the egg, red is indicating the egg, blue is indicating the sperm, and here this one is about somatic cell, okay, we are taking from the somatic cell. And during uh, fertilization or so you would see that the the SCNT the genes the nucleus where cloning is, we are performing this cloning right in that situation what happens is the de denomethylation happens quite good or normal for both male and female and it is shown as black line here because now the DNA, the male and female pronucleus would have fused and formed a nucleus. So they're mixing it together and showing it as um, black line, trophoectoderm and inner cell mass. So the, the nuclear transfer, the ones that we have taken somatic cell from and performed, the, deno, the methylation is not as accurate or as low as it, sh it is for the normal embryos. So that is one of the problems. If we were to do it properly, we would expect or we would like that it would be in this stage, right? The demethylation should have uh, occurred uh, very low. It should have come to this level. And then de novo methylation can occur. So one of the problems is probably when we are cloning, that is one of the issues that might be an issue that might be complicating our ability to clone animals or for whatever purposes. Okay, so there are epigenetic problems when we perform these kinds of things. I'll stop here. Maybe I'll take it in the next class again. And right now, I would want to discuss about um, the end semester exam. Sorry, the CIA. In CIA, you are likely to have an, when is the exam? We discussed, we already allotted time. Is it on Monday or? Monday. That is 27th. Yes, sir. So 27, 9, 21, right? During the class hours. So you people are supposed to come five minutes, at least five minutes early. 
the video will be recorded and you have to ensure you are professionally dressed and your surroundings are good um, without any disturbance good connectivity you will put you will, your videos will be on your video will be on so i'm from the experience from the previous just now concluded ca in the in another batch i think uh, everything is fine the question paper will be available right at the time it is in the it is available the question paper will come in the gcr and it is as an assignment and once you have finished the exam you will have about 60 minutes 50 minutes for writing and 10 minutes for other means like downloading and uploading and so on the exam is for 20 marks you will have three different questions question number three will be a little analytical it will have 10 marks and question number two will be critique statement i will give you an example now and here the question number one will have one into okay five into one marks five marks question number two is five marks and three is 10 marks so total of 20 marks try to use diagrams as many as much as possible schematics that will be more appreciated if you can do that and i would want to give you a simple example one second i need to give you an example right Can you read this statement? So what you have, uh, did I explain these question type? No, right? I will give you statements and you are supposed to read the statements very well, very carefully and critically analyze the statement. And you should be able to support your comments. You have to comment, say something is, yes, it is true and why you think it is true. No, it is not true. Why you think so it is? It's yes and no do not have any value or no marks for it. All the marks will be for your explanations. So in the previous one, um, okay, I'll get, I'll finish this. I said one mark questions, two mark, uh, first one mark questions into five one mark questions, one five mark question, and three is ten mark. This one will be based on, I told you to find out some of the answers uh, for some questions, some components I have given in the slides, in the videos that are there. You can check them up. I told you to read by yourselves and find out from the internet what it means. I will give from that. That is the self-study part. You should know what is the component. Why are we using it in, in our protocols? This is about critique, critiquing. That is what I'm explaining here. And this one is about analysis. Something like uh, what we have done, say characterization of genotypes and so on. Or something could be given with AG, uniparental, etc. Okay. So the comment, some of the examples would look like this. If you want to try and explain, I would be very happy about it. In embryonic stem cell, stem cells derived from a male embryo, the paternal X chromosome is inactivated, whereas embryonic stem cells derived from female embryo, the maternal X chromosome is inactivated. I would leave it to you, and I would want you to try. If you can try, I might be of some help to you if you try. So this is one uh, example that I might be uh, something on these lines. You will get a question. Yeah. 
In embryonic stem cells derived from a male embryo, the paternal X chromosome is inactivated, whereas embryonic stem cells derived from female embryo, the maternal X chromosome is inactivated. This has multiple things. First, we are saying embryonic stem cells. Then we are saying the sex, sex of the embryo. Then we are saying about X chromosome inactivation. And we are also talking about whether it is paternal or maternal, right? And that way it becomes a little complicated. Is anyone trying? I would like it if you are trying, and then I can probably help you through the question. You can also take a snapshot of it, a screenshot of it, so that you can discuss with your other friends in case. So what you will, um, you can say yes or no, or some part of it is uh, true, some part of it is false. You should explain why that is false and why that is true. That's the part of your answer. That's how you get five marks. OK, somebody confirmed. Did you take a print screen of it? You can share it in the WhatsApp group and tell this is a sample question and see if anybody wants to try. OK, please respond. Yes, sir. OK, Take good. Them. Yeah, this is another question. Um, the chromosome is always imprinted. The X chromosome is always imprinted with the female type, while Y chromosome is always imprinted with male type. Okay, that is another question. You can also take a print screen of it and circulate it with your friends. Taken? Yes, sir. OK. So again, in this, you have several complexities because you are talking about, um, sorry, one second. We're talking about X chromosome. We are talking about imprinting, right? So X, an individual, say female, and here is a male. A male would, uh, female has two X chromosomes and male has one X chromosome and one Y. In which one do you expect imprinting to, in which, in which case do you expect uh, uh, imprinting to happen? So, uh, sorry, both are, say for example, imprinting happens. This is a theoretical question. just trying to put in to see if you understand imprinting patterns or properly uh, properly or not say x chromosomes uh, there are two and if this one is forming gametes one will go into one gamete and the one here same is the case with this because the sex of this is female you will get female type imprints on both this one as well as this one because during gametogenesis whatever imprints are there they are erased and new ones are made the same can go in this case so i will just write it as maternal type of imprinting okay um i will just change it so i will put it as this symbol both are now maternal type of imprints were made on both x chromosomes because the sex of this female because of this female in this case in the male we have one x chromosome and one y and during gametogenesis they will be whatever imprints are here they will be erased and made into x and uh, they will be new imprints will be made what kind of imprints they will be paternal type now look at 
how many X chromosomes do we have? This is female. There are three X chromosomes. This is female. And this is male. Uh, this is X chromosome, but it is male. And this is Y chromosome, and it is male. So now read the assessment. Uh, probably the X chromosome is always imprinted with female type. Is that true? Female, female, but this is not, right? X chromosome, depending on the origin, because male also has X chromosome, and if imprinting was there on the X chromosome, males could be imprinted by maybe by female type or male type, okay? Because male also can will have X chromosome. In Y, if you are talking about Y chromosome, Y chromosome is present only in males. Females do not have it. So any, if there is imprinting, it would have been the male type. So half part of the chromosome, the the statement until here is false, because there can be both male and female imprinting on X chromosome, whereas on Y chromosome, that part of it is true because Y chromosome is present only in the males and if there is imprinting, it would have been male type. And I will also help you with this. And the first thing you need to understand here is embryonic stem cells derived from a male embryo. The paternal X chromosome is inactivated. A male has X and Y. If there is one X, it has actually come from the mother. From the father, it would have gotten the uh, Y chromosome. And so the first thing is paternal X chromosome is wrong. It would have been maternal X chromosome because that's what a male embryo would get. Second thing is, we are talking about X chromosome inactivation. When does inactivation occur? Dosage compensation. You, when you have two X chromosomes, one should be inactivated. So there is, here in the male, you have only one X chromosome. No inactivation. Right? And so the first part of it is false. And it's the false is two things in this statement is it is not paternal X chromosome, there is nothing like that. And it would actually be paternal Y chromosome, right? And there is no X chromosome inactivation in male embryo because there is no, there is only one X chromosome. In the female, this is uh, beyond your course, I mean, beyond your uh, classes at this time. So just don't worry. In this Embryonic stem cells derived from female embryo, the maternal X chromosome is inactivated. Uh, maternal or paternal, there are two. One is derived, obtained from the father, mother, and one is from the father. Which one is inactivated in the ICM is usually, it is actually random inactivation. In some cells, this the maternal one is inactivated in some other cells paternal one is inactivated. Okay, that is how we discussed about how a um, an organism like our lionization in the cat, it has different body mosaic of uh, body patterns, colors, and that comes about. So the second question, second point is also wrong. Maternal X chromosome inactivation is present, but which one? Is it maternal or paternal? In the embryonic stem cells means that must have come from the ICM. And in the ICM, it is random inactivation. In some, uh, some cells, maternal X chromosome is inactivated. In some cells, paternal X chromosome is inactivated. We already discussed that part, actually. But still, we have uh, some more classes to go when we reach there. Any questions in these? Please tell others also to watch this video so they would get some idea about um, it. Please take also a snapshot of this and try to see a screenshot of it and see if you can find an answer for this. So for five marks, a statement will be given and you are supposed to critique. It will be in this pattern.
Yes. Did you take? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Anything else? Any questions? Okay. Thank you for attending. You have been nice.